hello everyone welcome back to my channel so today we are diving deep into something a lot of you has been asking me about they always ask me what's the best processor for emulation on android so um if you've ever struggled with laggy games constant crashes or your emulators refusing to run certain titles most of the time it's not the emulator's fault but rather it's your processor so in today's video i'm going to break down which processor you should avoid which one you should go for and also share my personal recommendation for the best emulators depending on the system you want to play so stick around with me because by the end of this video you will know exactly what kind of device you need for smooth emulation without much ado let's get started But before we continue, don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video. It really helps the channel grow and lets me keep making content like this for you guys. Now let's start with the big warning over here. So if you want to get serious about emulation, please stay away from MediaTek SoC processes. Now MediaTek chips are fine for casual gaming, browsing or watching videos. But when it comes to emulation, they have big limitations. They don't get custom driver support like Snapdragon chipsets, meaning you can't unlock the full potential of the GPU. That means less compatibility, more starter, and in some cases, games won't even boot at all. So if you are considering buying a phone just for emulation, please and please stay away from MediaTek devices. Now, this is my recommendation processes for emulation. So um, let's talk about what you actually should be looking for. And the sweet spot starts from Snapdragon 845 and above. That's the baseline if you want reliable performance across most emulators. Older chips below the 845 will struggle with demanding titles. So consider 845 the entry ticket into proper emulation. And also, if you really want to push your emulators to the next level, look at phones with Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 agent 2 or agent 3 so um one one could ask why this because they support custom adreno gpu drivers with these drivers you can unlock hidden performance fix graphics glitches and get away smoother gameplay compared to the stock drivers so if you are the type who like tweaking settings and squeezing out every little bit of performance these processes are the sweet spots now let's talk about the Snapdragon 8 Elite. Is it worth? Because I know most of you guys will be having this chipset. So this processor is an absolute monster. Unlike the others, it doesn't even need custom drivers. It's powerful enough to brute force it away through most games and emulators. So if you have a device with a Snapdragon 8 Elite, you are basically set for years of heavy emulation without worrying too much about optimization. Now this is my personal setup, I mean what I use for emulation, just to give you some real world perspective. So um, for heavy emulations, I use the IQ Neo 10 Pro Plus which comes with a Snapdragon 8 Elite and this handles pretty much everything I throw at. And also for light emulations, I use the Google Pixel 6 Pro. I know that it's not as powerful but it still get the job done for lighter systems and I also know that a lot of my viewers have similar or even MediaTek devices so I test on both ends. Now that we've covered the processes, let's talk about the emulators themselves because choosing the right emulator matters just as much as having the right hardware. So for me, for Nintendo Switch emulations, I always use Yuzu, Suyu, Sudachi, Eden, Citron and any other Skyland based emulator. And also on low end devices, I recommend you guys to use Xeonis emulator or Suyu emulator as they are lighter and can run decent with some tweakings. For Nintendo 3DS, Citra 3DS, the classic choice, Lime 3DS, also known as the Azaha or the Azaha Plus 3DS emulator. Also, you can go for the Lemonade 3DS emulator, another solid option. But please bear in mind that with, um, both Citra and Lemonade are out of development, meaning you won't get, even if you manage to get the emulator, you are not going to get future updates. So um, for PSP games, go for the OG PPSSPP, it has no contents over here, 
it's lightweight stable and run on almost anything you throw at for ps2 emulation eta ss2 and eta ss2 are your best options they are demanding though but works very well with snapdragon soc for ps3 emulations go for the rpss 300 but here is the catch this emulator is extremely demanding meaning you will need at least snapdragon 8 gen 2 or above and preferable with custom drivers to get decent results for nintendo ds the legendary drastic ds emulator and it's also still the best for ds games and finally for the nintendo wii go for the good old dolphin emulator it's mature stable and works great on snapdragon chipset now um to conclude or, or to wrap this thing up first you have to skip any mediatek soc device meaning don't go for any mediatek device as you are going to use it for emulation but rather go for snapdragon devices so you can choose between or you can go for snapdragon 845 and above and also the best range is snapdragon 8 gen 1 to 8 gen 3 if you want custom driver support if you are aiming for the absolute beat experience grab a device with the snapdragon 8 elite as it will brute force any games you throw at without needing any custom drivers and finally pick the right emulator for the system you want to play that way you will enjoy smooth gameplay without headache so um what i want to say is if you find this guide helpful make sure to drop a like subscribe and share this video with your friends and let me know in the comment section what device are you using for emulation right now I would love to hear from you. Thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Thank you.